Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I'm so excited to play this one. This was one of my favorite games on Kickstarter last year. From Van Ryder Games, this is Final Girl. And a few quick disclaimers. First of all, I was sent a review copy of this one, and secondly, Van Ryder published our first game design, Salvation Road, just to put that out there before we get into the game. So Final Girl is a solo-only game, playing on the Final Girl trope from horror movies, specifically slashers, where one girl defeats the big bad in the end, whether it's Jason or Freddy or Michael Myers. And this one is a riff on Van Ryder Games' previous hostage negotiator, where you play cards and roll dice to see whether those card effects succeed while trying to save people, but here your ultimate goal is to defeat the big bad. And I'm going to give a quick overview of play and then do a full solo playthrough. Our patrons voted for me to go against Dr. Fright in the Carnival of Blood. Sounds awesome. And you can also check out my separate review video that should be airing the same day. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, lots of ways to support us. We have a Patreon, which has early access to our videos. You can vote on which games we cover. We also have a separate streaming channel, a weekly podcast, and a Discord if you'd like to come talk to us. All right, so first to give you an overview of the game, let me show you the main things going on. First, we've got our final girl board. Over here, we've got our horror track, which will slowly increase as the villain does terrible stuff or decrease as we take actions. And the main thing this determines is how many dice we roll in our horror checks. So when it goes over here, we are only rolling one. And if we get it all the way back into the green, we're rolling three. We also have the time track, which will start at six on each round. And most actions will decrease this, some will increase it. We can discard cards from our hand to increase it by one. And this is used to purchase action cards for our hand during the planning phase. And finally, we've got our final girl. There are two in each killer pack. And since I'm going against Dr. Fright the Dream Doctor, who's clearly inspired by Freddy Krueger, I picked Nancy for my final girl based on Nancy Thompson. She was in the original Nightmare on Elm Street. She was in Dream Warriors, the third movie. And she was even in New Nightmare, kind of playing her actress. It gets complicated. But she's a weaker final girl with very low health, but powerful abilities. So we'll see how that goes. And speaking of health, I've got these three hearts here and then my final health token. And I flip that over when I take the final damage and basically I might be dead or I might have a second chance at life if there's hearts on the back of it. And to win the game, I have to take away all of Dr. Fright's hearts and kill him before he can do the same to me. So this is his heart track. He's also got a final health token. He's got his bloodlust track, which will tick up mainly when he kills victims and will increase horror and increase his attack and movement stats. Unlock his dark power, which is randomly chosen. So there's a card here. And he's also got a finale card that'll come into play once we go through the entire terror deck. The terror deck is made up of 10 cards. These are a mix of cards keyed to Dr. Fright. He has his own unique cards and also some cards keyed to the Carnival of Blood, our location, which we'll see in a moment. And finally, Dr. Fright is unique in that he's got this Awake and Asleep deck. Basically, like with Freddy Krueger, we'll be awake for a lot of the game. That means we can't hurt him and he can't hurt us, but he can definitely kill our friends. And then we have to go with sleep to actually bring the battle to him, but then we're in his world in the boiler room and he can come after us. Very cool stuff. And next we've got the location. It's made up of a bunch of different spaces connected by lines and they've got little numbers which are really only used for when victims panic and run away from the killer. Now some of the locations have a green door. Those are exits where I can bring these yellow meeples, these victims to help them escape. Three of them have orange wrench symbols. That shows that there are decks of items here. You can see the three item decks here and the top card is turned over. So we've got a bullwhip, a knife and an energy drink. So if, for example, I want to get the bullwhip, which is probably the best weapon available right now, I could do so. And those items are unique to the location. This setup card is unique to the location, center stage, that determines where I, the final girl, starts and the killer and all the uh, different victims. And here I am, by the way, the pink meeple, the killer is the red meeple. And finally, each location has some unique event cards. In this case, I got a funny one, employee transport. And this is actually a beneficial one. Some are bad for you, some are good. I have this little golf cart. And if I end the round in a space with the golf cart, I can drive it with some victims around the outskirts of the carnival, which could be super helpful. Finally, we've got the action cards that drive my action in the game. These are the six zero value cards, which you start the game with. And to show you what I mean, they have an hourglass value in the bottom right. That's how much it costs to buy the card during the planning phase with remaining time you have. And each card has a thematic title. Here we've got weak attack to <laughs> weakly try to punch Dr. Fright. And it has three effects, no successes, one success, two or more successes. And that corresponds to the horror track I showed you earlier. So right now the killer meeple is on the four space, which is in the two dice spot. So if I wanted to take this weak attack option, I would roll two dice and two of the sides just have blanks. Two of the sides have a two card icon and I can turn those into successes, but I have to discard two other cards from my hand. And then finally, each die has a five and a six that are just a straight up success. 
So if, for example, I rolled this, I would get to do the one success version of the action. I would punch the killer for one damage, but take one damage myself. If I rolled like this, I would do one damage without getting hurt myself. And if I rolled no successes, I would take a damage and have to end my action phase. But again, you can mitigate a lot by discarding cards and other things like that. And with the basics out of the way to show you how the round goes, first you have the action phase. You can play as many action cards as you want. Then you have the planning phase where you purchase cards, but you can't buy any cards you use that round. Then you have the killer phase where you flip up the top terror card and do whatever actions it indicates. The panic phase where victims in the same space as the killer will run away. And finally, the upkeep phase, which usually is not important until generally the end of the game. And one more thing before we get going, Nancy's got these five meeple shaped spaces on her card. Every time she rescues a victim by bringing them to an exit, she gets to place them in one of these spots, immediately gaining the bonus indicated. And when all five spots are filled, she flips to her powered up version where she gets some ongoing ability. And if she saves any extra victims, she gets something else. In this case, she heals herself. So generally speaking, in the early game, you want to save victims both to deny the killer getting bloodlust from killing them and also to level yourself up. And you also might want to find some items and weapons to take the fight to the killer until you eventually decide to actually try to defeat them. So that is that. Does Nancy have a chance against Dr. Fright? Let's find out and play Final Girl. All right, so as we get into our first action phase, let's go over the basic actions. Weak attack is usually not very good until you get a weapon, unless he does have a chance to punch somebody. But remember, I literally cannot hurt Dr. Fright until I'm asleep, so we're going to ignore that. Short rest will heal me, but I'm not hurt, although this does allow me to go to sleep when I want to, when I'm ready to fight Dr. Fright. So we're going to ignore that as well for now. These will probably just be discards. Walk lets me move, and focus lets me lower har. So walk is definitely going to be my focus. Now at the moment, Dr. Fright is right north of me, but he can't hurt me. So these people of the animal cages are in dire danger. Then these guys aren't doing too great either. Now there's an exit right here at the clown car. So I might wanna like run over and get this guy out of there. There's a huge group of people up here in the Northeast. So I wanna to try to rescue them. But then I also wanna to get to the golf cart because that'll give me a ton of free movement and I can use it to rescue some of these people. So I think that's probably gonna be my first goal, maybe to like go down, maybe rescue this person, maybe just leave them and run right for the golf cart. Yeah, let's, let's try that. So my first card I'm gonna play is a walk. All right, let's go, Nancy, walk it off. Ooh, <laughs> great start to a game that bodes good things to come. Two successes, I get to move two spaces or up to two spaces for only one time. And whenever you move, you can bring up to two victims with you. So I'll go one, to get them further away from Dr. Fright. Listen to me, there's a killer on the loose in your dreams. <laughs> Nobody believes me, of course. And we'll try to walk again over to here and then just go-kart our way to the exit, yes. So yeah, with that in mind, walk card number two. Uh, come on, come on. Ooh, pretty good. Um, So I could discard two cards for a second success, but do I need to? No, I want to end my turn on the golf cart because I get to move with that during the upkeep phase at the end of the turn. So one success lets me move into one space at one more time cost. Hey, everybody, get out of the forest of horrors. And just to show you my time track over here, the first walk brought me to five, the second to four. And remember, this is kind of my currency to plan out what I'm going to do and get better actions in a second. So I could stop now for the turn and keep these cards for the next round. I could spend some of them for extra time. I could spend all four of them and get up to eight time and get a ton of actions. Or I could try to take a focus action to lower har because it goes up really quickly. You don't want to ever let it get into that red area where you're only rolling one die. So yeah, let's do one focus action while I still have a lot of cards to discard if I roll poorly. All right, come on, another success. Oh my gosh, I'm rolling great. So let's see, I could discard two cards to get two successes. Either way, har is decreasing by one, but here I have to spend the time and here I get two time. So by discarding two cards that are worth two time anyway, I get a net gain of three time, right? Yeah, so I should discard the two cards, it makes sense. So I'm gonna discard the ones that aren't really useful right now because I don't wanna be in the dream world and I don't want to attack Dr. Fright, I can't anyway. And again, that turns this four into a success, so I've got two. So minus one har plus two time, amazing. Dr. Fright, I'm coming for you! <laughs> I'm actually getting close to uh, three dice, which would be great. But with only one focus card left in my hand, and if I fail in the action roll, I would lose two time, I think I'll stop there. And I could discard this to go to seven time, but it's nice to have some of the zero cards in all of your turns, at least as fodder to discard. So I'm just gonna hang on to it for next round. By the way, I should check, the Forest of Wonders has an energy drink where I am. That's not exciting. <laughs> I really want to get to the uh, House of Mirrors or the Things to Astonish for those weapons. But that's going to be the end of the action phase. Nice start, Nancy. You are running, girl. Uh, we got planning phase. We're going to purchase action cards. We've got six time to do so. 
So here's the full array of purchasable action cards. I'll go through them really quickly. Close Call is just luck mitigation, letting you reroll dice. Sprint is faster movement. Search gets you items. Guard and Retaliate help you not get hurt by the killer, and Retaliate actually hurts them back. Improvise and Planning give you better success rates for the rest of the round or help you make a really important roll. Distraction is better horror reduction. Furious Strike and Critical Blow are way better attacks than the basic weak attack, and Long Rest is a better version of Short Rest, but will also put me in the dream world with Dr. Fright in this scenario. So I've got six to spend. I'm going to buy both close calls. Those only cost one, and they can, again, let me reroll stuff. Then I've got four more. I don't need Guard right now because the killer can't even attack me. So let's go with some sprinting for movement and searching to get an item. There we go. And that goes with the one focus card that I had left over. And now after I've planned for every card I want, then I take all the cards I played for the round, all these five zero cost cards, and I add them back to the planning selection. So next round I can buy those, and since they're zero cost, I get them for free. So you're always gonna have like a lag time of one round for cards to come back. And finally I reset my time to six, although it's already there. Now we get to the killer phase. Dr. Fright's coming for us. Oh no, what's he gonna do? Grab your crucifix. If you have a crucifix, you may discard it to ignore the rest of his card. That would have been awesome, but this means Dr. Fright will target either the final girl or victim, whoever is closest. Although while I'm awake and he can't hurt me, it's just going to be victims. He'll move once and then stabby stabby once, and then he'll do it all over again. And both his movement and his damage are controlled by his current bloodlust. So he can move one space for each action and do one damage. Although one damage is enough to kill any victim. So the damage ratings only really matter when he's trying to attack me. And by the way, he's got this basic killer action up here, which is pretty much the same for everybody. They just stab somebody in their space. And the killer does that at the start of every killer phase before he does the terror cards. He basically gets a free kill if you leave people with him. All right, so this is not great. He's going to move here, close to space, murder one of these people. Ah! Then he's going to do it again. The closest guy is right where he is, so he's going to kill another one. And now all of those people are in danger. Because he murdered two victims, one, two, and these are bonuses he gets, so we're going to increase horror by one, and now he moves two with every action. Darn it. Boop, and we keep our dead people here. No! Then we have the panic phase where victims finally believe me that there's a killer on the loose, but they have to be in the same space as the killer, and someone has to have died. And in this case, these people are just blissfully unaware <laughs> that they are about to get murdered. God! But we have the upkeep phase, and the big thing is, I'm taking my golf cart. So this is an exit, but pretty important, you can only save victims during the action phase. So that's about to happen in a second. I can save both of these people, but I need to be with them during that action phase. So we'll do that in a second, and actually right now, because this is the action phase. So right away! Let's see, what actions does Nancy have? She can get the planning action card for free, the long rest action card for free. This is both pretty expensive, so that's nice. Gain two time for this round. Move two spaces or heal. Okay, definitely gonna move two spaces, rescue some more people. And I guess gain two time for now? Two spaces, heck yeah, one. Come here with me, two. Oh my gosh, we're gonna rescue all these people so quickly. So I guess I'll get the planning action card and the long rest action card for free. Not that I plan to use them anytime soon. Planning is a really nice one when you're about to make a huge roll, like a big attack. It gives you extra dice to roll in that roll. And long rest just heals me a ton. I don't need that yet. But yeah, one more victim saved and I'll unlock Nancy's abilities. Oh, and you know what? I'm looking at the golf cart. It's even cooler. The victims can drive it by themselves. And look, we can drive it into the enemy once per game and deal three damage to him. So yeah, once we go into the dream world, I guess we're gonna drive our dream golf cart into dream Dr. Fright. Okay, we'll just manifest our reality, I guess. But yeah, what do I wanna do? Um, I think I just wanna sprint and rescue more people. Just, and yeah, I've got close calls to re-roll, focus to discard. I'm probably not gonna discard any of those more expensive things, but let's try this. And oh my, what are these rolls, man? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to show you, like, easy mode of Final Girl, especially with the golf cart, which is also helpful. Uh, the game is not always like this, I promise. Yeah, yeah, I can move up to three spaces for this one time, which will bring me down to seven, since I got the two bonus from rescuing people. So, yeah, let's see, I guess, like, one, two? Do I want the third movement? I don't think I do. Yeah, there's no way to get to these guys, unfortunately. And I also can't quite reach the locations with the weapons. Oh, man, I should have gone to the House of Mirrors right when I was in the big top. Whatever. Okay, so we'll go one, two... And I don't really want to move with the third because I want to be able to move the golf cart at the end of the round. So there we go. So I heal two, not that we care. And the extra person heals me another one, not that I care. <laughs> They're all rescued though, that's great. And here's Nancy's ability. Each time you lose normal health, you may reveal a black final health token from the general pool and swap it with your black final health token if you wish. If you do not, remove it from the game. 
You cannot do this with a white final health token. So basically her ability is to make sure that she gets the best black health token eventually. It's definitely a weaker ability than a lot of the other final girls, but she has pretty strong actions and flips everybody quickly. So that's all nice. All right, and honestly, should I do anything else? I guess, yeah, let's focus because he did raise horror last turn. All right. Oh my gosh, I still got a success. That's going to be minus one time, minus one horror. I'm not afraid of you, Dr. Fright. I've got a golf cart. Uh, so we're back to our starting six. Wow, that's great. All right, we're going to stop the action phase there. Let's go into the planning phase. Now I've got five cards left over and 10 is the max hand size. And I think I've got, yeah, five level zeros. So <laughs> um, let's buy the critical blow for six. That brings me to six cards. And then I'll get four of the zeros and just leave one for next time. Let's get both of the walks and the focus and a short rest. I don't need the weak attack. I mean, I don't really need either of the attacks, but the critical blow, it's nice to at least buy it and hold on to it until I go into the dream world and smack him in the face. All right, then my sprint and focus will go in here for purchase next time. And it's the killer phase. So he's got nobody to kill immediately. Never sleep again. What? Horror! We fall asleep! Okay! <laughs> uh, if you're already asleep, you may reset the Boiler Room deck if you wish. If you do not, resolve one additional Boiler Room card at the end of the killer phase. Okay, so we weren't already asleep. So this is great. He doesn't move. He doesn't kill anybody, but we're asleep. We can punch him. He can punch us. Ugh. Horror increases by one. And here's how this works. Okay, we've got all these Boiler Room cards. They've been shuffled. We're going to move this to there. And whoosh. All right, so we cannot interact with victims anymore, but we can interact with Dr. Fright and he can interact with us. We can still search for items, basically like dream versions of the items, and we can still drive the dream golf cart, as I said. Uh, it's just really about victims. And now we're at the end of the killer phase, and at the end of each killer phase, while we're asleep, we have to resolve one boiler room card. And I'm gonna show you one of these and then reshuffle them. There are four quadrants, and each card has a single spot where Dr. Fright appears, okay? He shows up once in each quadrant. And how it works is we have to slide the entire deck out one way. All right, so this is a total crapshoot, and if we see him, he attacks us for free. Okay, yes, we got lucky. All right, so no Dr. Fright. And there's a lot of process of elimination in this mechanic. We know that he was either there or there. So these are gonna be less dangerous quadrants in the future, whereas these ones are more likely to show up. But we don't have to do another one until the end of the next killer phase. Now we can resolve as many of these as we want during the action phase if we just wanna wake up quickly, but you know, I, I think I might wanna punch him, so we'll keep it for now. So we have no peril phase, nobody's running away, but we do have an upkeep phase. Uh, I could drive it here, try to run in and punch him. I guess, and then maybe head towards things to astonish, try to get the bullet back and bring these people with me. Oh no, I can't because I'm asleep. But yeah, I think, I think that's the play. I can't unfortunately drive this into him because he can only move around the outskirts. Uh, not that I want to hit him with it yet anyway, although I don't know, I guess this would be a chance, so maybe later. All right, so look at my cards. I got two rest cards, two walk cards, two close calls, a search, a focus, a critical blow, a planning. I think I'm just going to do a basic walk first into his space and then punch him. All right, so honestly, one success is enough here. Come on. Oh, wow, I've not rolled a single roll of misses. Insane. So it cost me one time. I'm down to five. And hello, Dr. Fright. I think the one who should really be afraid is you. Uh, although, hmm, I really don't want to fail this because look, this will end my action phase if I roll only one success or no successes. So I think we'll do planning first, right? There's a good time to use it. All right, come on, come on, this is important. Do it. Ooh, ooh. Okay, we're not done, close call. I can play after any horror roll to re-roll a die or pay two time to re-roll both dice. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll go down to three time, let's do it. Come on, man, come on. Okay, uh, geez, okay, I'll take it, I'll take it. I gotta discard two cards. Um, definitely the short rest, and I guess the focus can go away. All right, so one success cost me a time, and down to two time, yuck, but I get two extra dice. So that'll be four total for the critical blow, come on. I really want two successes, I really want two successes, come on! <laughs> that wasn't great. Ooh, okay. Uh, oh my gosh. I can use a close call to reroll all of them, but that'll be my last two time I'm doing it. I'm doing it. All right. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. That's it, baby. That's it. Yeah, Nancy. Punch him. So I deal three damage to Dr. Fright out of only nine health, and I lose a horror because he is shocked that I just punched him in the face or kicked him in the balls. I don't really know. Three down. You are hurt, sir. All right. I'm down to three horror. That's great. And now, what do I want to do? I think I want to walk away from him, right? <laughs> I don't want him to come kill me. Although if I fail the roll, I don't have any cheap cards to get rid of, but whatever, we're doing it. Okay, come on. Yes, we can move one. But importantly, that did cost one time, which means we go below zero and our action phase ends immediately. And I could go a different direction, but no, let's go here. I'd almost rather him attack me than them. We'll see what happens. 
But here's the very sad part. We are below zero, so we have no time to buy anything, except happily you can always buy your zero cost card. So I'm getting a focus and a weak attack. Go with my search and long rest. Wow, I can't move at all, can I? This is not great. And then everything else I use this turn, including those big cost cards, all go back in the purchase area. But I definitely taught Dr. Fright some fear. Let's see what he does in return. How could there be so many traps? If there are no item trap cards in the item discard pile, discard and draw the next terror card. Otherwise, do the following. So there are actually traps in the item deck waiting for you in the Carnival of Blood. There are also trap terror cards that will go on the board and permanently make spaces deadly. But here I'm just skipping a terror card, which brings me closer to the finale, his like ultra mode, basically, we run out of terror cards. That's not great. Marked for death. Until the next terror phase, all victims in your space immediately panic. Oh, well, maybe that's good. I mean, they're going to run away, right? And then this guy's going to move towards me, and then he's going to stab whoever is there. And then if Dr. Fright did not attack you and you are awake, you fall asleep. But now he's definitely going to attack me. All right, so first, these friendly people panic. Uh, you roll a d6 for each of them. A one heads them up towards Dr. Fright. Sometimes they're stupid. Uh, two to five sends them west. Six sends them toward things to astonish. Now, I guess even though I'm in the dream and I can't rescue them, they still, like, sense my presence and freak out. Okay. They're both going here, which I guess is not the worst thing in the world. And then Mark for Death says he's coming down to me, and he is attacking me. Luckily, he's only at one damage right now, and uh, nothing else happens because I'm already asleep. And to show you this, there's the one damage value, which means he hits me for one heart. And with Nancy's ability, I get to look at a black heart token. Oh, and geez, <laughs> that was an easy one. That's the best one. Uh, so I'm just going to replace that. Did we get to look at what the other one was. It was nothing, so that would have been instant death if I had taken my final heart. So, boom, we are uh, set up to have a bunch of extra life when he finally hits us the last time. But oh, we're not done yet because we're still asleep. Okay, so I definitely don't want to go to the right again because that'll give me a two-thirds chance of getting hit since both of these are still eligible. So let's go, uh, let's go down. Let's go down. Do, 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 do. Is there? Oh, I see him. Ah! So he attacks me for free. I'm taking uh, one damage. And now we know that he's been there. And that one's empty. So now we've had that card and one of these two cards. We're not sure which yet. That's yeah, an automatic damage. Not great. Uh, the one good thing about getting damage is that if all you have left is your final health token, you get plus one die to all your rolls. And same thing if the killer is down to one health token. But oh my gosh, I can't move. I didn't leave myself any move cards. What is wrong with me? All right, well, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, huh. Could do a long rest. Uh, if I get at least one success, I'll fully heal. Although I'll lose some time, but that's all right. Uh, I could try to weak attack him. It seems like that makes sense to do as well. So yeah, let's do like the long rest and then the weak attack. We'll start with this. I don't want to die. Uh, ooh, ooh, no. Okay. Um, um, I'll get rid of the focus and the weak attack. I don't really need to attack him. And I'll keep the search for later. So I get to heal three, which again brings me up to full health, actually one more than full health, and I lose two time, I'm down to four, but I'm gonna keep the search for when I get down to things to astonish in a moment. Which means, wow, that was a quick action phase, I am done, he's still right on me, and then I gotta uh, buy for four points. But I get all my zeros back, including both my walks, that's good. And for the four, I should need another search, the one I have should be enough. Sprint and, ooh, guard seem to make the most sense here, I think, to prevent the damage he's gonna deal to me. All right, here he comes. Before he does anything, he gets a free attack on me. So I guess I'll go ahead and use guard. It's gonna reduce his damage. Well, I mean, it can reduce it by two. Should I just save this for later? Yeah, I'll just tank the damage, it's fine. Now his terror card might be worse anyway. Oh no, he's got a minor dark power. So this hangs out uh, and it gives him a special power until I deal two damage to him to get rid of it. So it also gives him extra health. While asleep, you must resolve one additional boiler room card at the end of the killer phase if able. Darn it. Well, I mean, it's fine. I guess I'll wake up really quickly because I only have two cards left. So that's not the worst. But the fact that he has two more health is not great. Although the good thing is he didn't activate, so he didn't hurt me anymore. At least not yet. Let's see how the boiler room goes. So I'm resolving both of these and then I'll immediately wake up. Okay, so what's left? I know that the card up there is left. And then either that or that. So it really is kind of a 50-50 thing. If I go right, I might get lucky. If I go left, I might get lucky. All right, well, let's try going right. No, no, okay, I get hit. And then I got to resolve another one. So now um, we've seen that. We've seen that. We've seen both. So right is totally safe. Yeah, because we know that he has to be on the left for the last one. All right, so we wake up. Um, 
And we'll shuffle those, but we got hit again, so we're down to uh, two life. Now we're awake, which means we can potentially rescue these people. That's pretty cool, but we can't hurt Dr. Fright anymore. Oh, and he can't hurt us, so yeah, we definitely want to get them, but I want to search for that thing first. So I think I'm going to walk to Things to Astonish, search for the bullwhip, and then try to sprint away, getting those people on the way. Maybe that's the plan, at least. So let's try walking first. And okay, we got one. That's all we needed. There'll be one time to move one. Get out of here, Dr. Sleep. All right, we're at the bullwhip spot. Let's try searching for an item. So any amount of successes can let me get an item, but if I fail, I have to take two hard to do so. If I get two successes, I get to look at two items and pick one. Although <laughs> Carnival of Blood, that's not as good because if you draw one of the traps in the item deck, you have to resolve it in addition to uh, getting the actual item. So I'd honestly be okay with just one success here. Just, okay, there we go. I'm not gonna pay for the extra, that's fine. So it's gonna cost us one time, bring us down to four, take the top item. Let's whip this boy, whip it good. Oh, wait, probably not the time to be singing to myself about whipping something. Oh, <laughs> they made the same joke I did. Zero is the range you can attack with it, which means in my space, plus one damage with every attack to the basic damage statistic of whatever card I'm playing. It takes up one hand spot, and you can only use one weapon per attack. So even if I got the knife, I couldn't do like a whippy knifey combo or anything. But this one says if you damage an enemy with the bullwhip, you remove them one space. That's great, because I remember if they're on your space, uh, when they activate and they get a free attack on you. And the final girl has two hand slots, so I could hold one more thing. Whenever you pick up an item, you can freely distribute them between your hands and your backpack, and you can also distribute your items at the end of each upkeep phase. All right, so that went great. Let's try to sprint and save those people. All right, come on, give me one more good roll. Oh, come on, come on, be a, be a star, be a star. Ooh, okay. I don't think I can afford to discard all four of my other cards. Well, I mean, only the guard is actually worth something. What would that give me? It would just give me an extra move. No, so we'll, we'll spend two. A short rest and focus to get two spaces of movement for one time. And should I save them? Well, here's the thing right now, I'm not really saving them because he's gone up to two movement values. So I would just get them to like the big top, for example, and he can come after us pretty quickly. But whatever, we're gonna do it. And then I can walk, I can walk him. That's right, he can't even hurt me right now. So if I can like, oh man, if I rolled two successes, I can get them to the clown car and they'd escape and I would heal. That's probably not gonna happen, but hey, we can always dream. But at least one more move should protect them unless he gets like a double movement card. So it seems worth it. It seems worth it. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, this game. Are you kidding me? That means, yeah, I can move two. And I got to do it, right? One, two. Get in the clown car. I don't know how you get out of here, but you do magically. And Nancy's power is for each additional victim. She heals one. So she is back to full health again. And there are only two people way in the corner that Dr. Fright could even go after. This is awesome. Now, what's not so awesome is that I'm down to three time and all I have in my hand is a guard. So what am I going to get? I'll get both my zeros and I guess a close call and maybe a sprint so I can actually move next turn. That seems like probably the best option. I mean, Dr. Fright, what are you going to do, man? Unless you put me to sleep, I guess. Frankie's coming for you. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next tarot card. So yeah, it's actually good to leave some victims. Otherwise, he's going to move two towards the victims. And then if Dr. Fright is in a space with at least one victim, two har, otherwise one har. This is great. He's not going to reach them. So just one har. That's not bad. So let's see. One, two. Yeah, it's definitely the fastest way to get to them. I'm right near him. So are they. I uh, might want to like can get back to the golf cart. It's so far away now. And then just one har. We're probably not going to ever get to the green, but that's okay. We're back to the action phase. I can't go to sleep to hit him. Um, even if I sprint over to where those people are, I still can't actually get them away from him. I don't know, maybe I just like focus for this turn and focus on getting more money. Maybe I discard some stuff to get more money. I know, I guess I have enough to get another Furious Strike, so... Um, hmm. Wait, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna discard a focus to get to seven time. And then I'm gonna stop because I've got four zero cards. That'll take me to seven cards in hand. Oh, no, sorry, eight cards, I can count. And then I'll get a critical blow and a close call to make sure it lands. And that gives me a weak attack and a critical blow, some luck mitigation. I've got a rest card to go to sleep. I think I can uh, go whale on this guy next turn, maybe, sort of, who knows? Oh my gosh, he might be so far away from killing these people. Let's see what he does. How did the tiger get loose? Carnival of blood? <laughs> if there are no victims, uh, no, there are. All victims panic. That might be good if they run away from him. Please run away from him. Then he's gonna move towards victims and stab them. And then do the following for the animal cages space and all spaces adjacent to it. Victims there are killed. Enemies there take one damage. If you are there, take one damage as well. Oh man, we need the animal cages. I want Dr. Fright to get bitten by a tiger. That'd be awesome. <laughs> ah, no, they're all the way over there. Okay, no problem, no problem. So 
Oh, crud. If I roll a one or two, they run towards him. If I roll a three to six, they get out of his range. Come on. Three to six for both. Three to six for both. Yes! Yes! Go! And I rolled two successes. Who knows? What is going on? Okay, man, but he's far away. But he hasn't killed him yet, which means he hasn't leveled up yet. That's good. That's really, really good. All right, so what am I going to try to do on my turn? <sighs> if I can sprint all the way over here and then uh, <laughs> uh, go to sleep with a short rest, then I can like weak attack him and critical blow him. That is so many actions. I don't know if all that'll work, but it's worth a try. It's worth a try. There we go. A lot of cards. I'll do the sprint first. If I can get a double success, I'll move three spaces. That's not likely, but we'll try. All right. Keep smiling on me. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, is it better to discard two or just do a walk? I think I do want to discard two. So I'm going to go down to five time and I want, I want some of the walks. I don't need all of them because the bullwhip will make him move away when I hit him. So yeah, let's keep one walk. Or no, I guess if I'm moving three, I don't need any walks. So I'll get rid of both walks and there we go. So here we are in the forest of horrors. And now I'm going to short rest to go to sleep, punch a ghost in the face. Yes, although I do not want to fail <laughs> because then my action phase ends. No, sir. And I'm actually at full health right now. This is not to go to sleep at all. Nice. OK, so I only heal one, but I'm not healing anyway. But I do lose one time. Uh, two successes would have avoided that, but it's OK. We're down to four time, and we're back in the boiler room. <laughs> uh, okay, asleep. That's right, Freddy, I'm in your world. Okay, um, critical blow is more likely to end my action phase. Weak attack is not. So let's do the weak attack first, and then the bullwhip says I may move them away. So I can hit him with a weak attack, then follow up with a critical blow and push him away with that one. That's the way to go. And we still got both our mitigation cards, so let's go for the weak attack. Bring it, Dr. Fry, bring it! Oh, crud, okay. Uh, I need two cards. Um, um, I don't need the focus. I guess I don't need both close calls. I kind of want to keep the guard. So, okay, there we go. And that means he takes one damage, but plus one from the bullwhip. So two, and I take one damage. And unfortunately, the two damage doesn't actually hurt him. It just gets rid of Hellish Pursuit, but that's still good. All right, and now we'll do the critical blow. And this is <laughs> the critical moment of the turn. Oh man, come on. I got one close call. One close call. Roll it. Yes, yes, I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't care. What is it? It's two damage, uh, one hard down. It's gonna be three damage with the bullwhip and I end my action phase, it's okay. I have my guard, I got my close call. I got a little bit of time to buy another attack, I think. This is good. And I am gonna shove him away so he has to move in, doesn't get a free attack against me. So three damage, look at this, look at this. Dr. Fright, you are going down. Minus one hard, also awesome. I got four time. Oh wait, get your colors right, Mike. <laughs> Uh, they do have like a separate miniature pack, which would obviously make this much more obvious. But yeah, I'm the pink one. All right, yeah, four time, I think. Furious Strike, right? Let's want to get Retaliate. Um, yeah, they both tend to do the same amount of damage, but this one would actually block his attack and I don't have to like do it on my turn. So yeah, you know what? Uh, let's do, let's do Retaliate instead of Furious Strike, I think. I also get a single zero card, but yeah, I'm very low on cards this round. So there's like a charmed game. I've never seen it go this well. Uh, okay, we're going to do his tarot card and then the boiler room card. And we're almost out of the deck, which means his finale is almost here. No, don't get another minus power. Endless sleep. You fall asleep. While this card is in play, you must remain asleep. Reset the boiler room immediately upon exiting it. I mean, that's that's fine. I don't want to wake up, you jerk. What bugs me is he has one extra health. All right, so here we go. Boiler room. Uh, last time, right. Hit me right away. Let's go. Top. No. No. Ooh, ooh. Wait, is that him? Oh, you jerk. <laughs> you hit until the end. Okay, he hits me for one. Or I should say he tries to hit me for one. Retaliate. So if I roll one success, I'll stop all his damage and I'll hit him for one plus one from the bullwhip. If I roll two successes, I'll hit him for three with the bullwhip, which sadly with his minor power will mean that he's still not dead, but whatever, we're doing it. Got a close call. I got cards to discard if I need to. Give it to me. Give me those stars. No, no. Oh, man. Well, it's okay. I'll, I don't really need time for next turn, so let's just spend two to do the full close call. One more chance. One more chance. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Do I want to discard two cards to do even more damage? I think. I think I do. I think it's okay to have basically no turn <laughs> next round. So what did that do? I did three damage to him, and since I'm hitting him with the bull, if I can knock him away again. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. I don't think I can use the bullwhip here because it's zero range and he's like kind of attacking me through the dream world. He's not actually in my space. So I don't think I get to knock him away. I don't think I get the extra damage, but still one, two damage. He's down to two life, although this could be another three on the back or a two on the back. We don't want it to be. It could be nothing and he could be dead very soon, but we don't know. All right, so that brings me back to my action phase. My action phase is nothing because I have no cards. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. 
but I do have four time. I've got weak attack, two walks, focus, short rest. What do I get with the four time? I think I get the Furious Strike, right? Well, I guess the weak attack is enough to kill him if he doesn't have the token, but if he does have the token, I need the Furious Strike to possibly finish him off. So, although I don't have the close call if I do that. Do I need the close call? <sighs> Yeah, you know what? I want to prepare for him getting the bonus health. So let's get the Fury Strike and call it. All right, exciting turn, Mike. What is Dr. Fright doing? Oh my God, he's slicing off his own fingers. Okay, so he's going to move two towards me. Dr. Fright takes one damage. Thank you, Dr. Fright. Oh, but if Dr. Fright took damage, three damage, and you and all victims in his space panic. I don't want to panic. I'm cool, man. Come on. But it's okay. It's okay. So I don't know if I needed him to do this. Although now I get plus one to my die rolls. That'll be awesome for the attacks I'm about to do. And then I panic, I panic. And okay, just switching places with him. That's all right. And now, all right, so top should be pretty safe, right? Top should be safe or should I go to the right? Let's go to the right. Okay, because we already have one right, so it's only a 33% chance. Come on, Dr. Fright, you butthead. But now we know the right is totally safe, so we're basically good to go for the next two reveals. And he is still somehow only at one damage. I cannot believe how much victim denial and like failure to attack he had this game. All right, so I'm not quite at one health. I almost wish I was so I could do my actions even better, but it's okay. Yeah, you know, part of me wants to run back and just get in the golf cart and hit him. <laughs> but no, no, we'll play this smart. So I'm gonna walk into his space, weak attack, furious strike, murder, uh, walking first. And don't forget, because he is at his final health, we get three dice and just need one success or even a partial success. Here we go. Whoa, okay. I mean, I don't need to walk two spaces, so that's not gonna actually matter, but it's still cool that I got it. I simply didn't like use up my future lockdown to five time. Dr. Fright, you thought you were safe, but here's Nancy Indiana Jones to whip you to death. <laughs> so let's see if he has extra health. We will weak attack him first and then furious strike him if he's still alive. Let's do this. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, okay, um, I think that's all I need, right? Ooh, in fact, perfect. It'll do a damage and hurt me one, getting me to my final health token, plus two dice, rolling four for the uh, Furious Strike if we need it. Do we need it? Do we need it? Is Dr. Fright going down like a chump? <laughs> Take that, buddy. Oh my gosh. That was the easiest game of Final Girl I've ever had, but it was still fun. <laughs> <laughs> you suck, Dr. Fright. Oh my gosh, you only killed two people. That would be like an embarrassing horror movie to do for Kill Count on <laughs> the slasher movie where only two people die. Wow. And hey, we never even got to see them, so let's see what he would have had. Uh, his dark power, Frightmare is inevitable. Oh, he may attack you even if you are awake, but you still can't attack him. That would have been nasty. And then what would have been his finale? This would have activated after this card. Welcome to the greatest show. We would have gotten another event. Um, and he would have run to the big top. Interesting. This finale would be face your fright. So you don't draw terror cards once the finale has been revealed. He would just always move and attack every turn. If you're awake when this uh, card is revealed, you fall asleep. While this card is in play, you are asleep for the remainder of the game. <laughs> so there you go. You just hang out with him forever. And I'm curious what the other event would have been. Probably way worse than the positive one I get. Did you follow me here? Place four new victims at the big top. That would have been bad when he just teleported to the big top and started killing people. One of them is a special victim who is your plucky younger sibling. <laughs> While the sibling's in your space, you may spend two time to reroll one die, but if she dies, plus two bloodlust. Oh no, sis. Uh, but okay, we didn't need that because we whipped him to death. Yes, final girl. <laughs> oh man, love this game. Uh, not to give away my thoughts, uh, go check out the separate review video and hear what I have to say about it. But yes, we are done. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.